Hello, uh, this is Eric. Uh, I just wanted to uh, share some thoughts I had throughout the week that have been on my mind. And I thought, you know, I have a lot of time as we all have different schedules now lately. And some of us uh, have more time than others where more downtime and I had some downtime. So I took advantage of it and tried to write something down uh, that was an encouragement to me because I've been struggling with uh, some anxiety and just restlessness with uh, the situation that's going on. So I uh, found some scriptures uh, and especially uh, from the life of Elijah and just a few verses that brought me comfort and uh, brought me to ponder and wonder about just how big God is and how uh, much we can trust in him. And uh, I, it sounds like a cliche, but it really was helpful to me this week and I thought I would share it. Um, so it's just a snapshot from his life. Uh, it's really just to show you how big God is and how he's in control. Uh, so I think there's a lot that we can meditate on and I think there's a lot to uh, consider. Um, the context, um, this, uh, you'll, we're going to be looking at 1 Kings uh, 17, verses 4 through 6. So not very much scripture, but this is just a short little devotion. Um, but we're going to be looking at 1 Kings 17, 4 through 6. And it's, the context is Elijah has just pronounced this drought. Uh, because of the idolatry and the worship, uh, idolatry and, and the pagan worship that God's people were involved in and taking part in. And uh, as oftentimes we see in the Old Testament and with, you know, maybe John the Baptist and the New Testament, we, it appears that sometimes being a prophet, uh, we see it uh, even people that are just men of God, sometimes being a prophet or a man of God sometimes uh, calls us to a lonely loneliness, to a lonely life or a lonely calling, let's say, not a lonely life, but uh, a, a calling that we, we are in the world, but we're not of the world. We just don't fit in. And, and it's something we can identify with, uh, I think. Um, but being a prophet appeared to be quite lonely and as he was called uh, to settle by this small brook where we would see God provide for him and uh, take care of him. Uh, and he would do it in a way that uh, Elijah would not be tempted at all to uh, elevate his gift over his giver. He did it in a way where he could see God's hand both miraculously and also he could see God's hand through providence we're going to see both of those because uh, God works all things even uh, you know like the wind and uh, uh, everything that happens you know is under God's authority he's sovereign and supreme over all so we don't want to say that God only works during miracles God works during providence during just the nature and natural things because uh, he's in control of that, too. Um, um, thankful we have a God that, that, that's um, holding this world together and a part of it daily. Um, so uh, we're going to see both of that. And I think let's, let's just jump in and read the scripture so you know where I'm, what I'm talking about. First Kings uh, 17, 4, 6 says, You will drink from the brook, and I have and I have directed the ravens to supply you with food there. So he did what the Lord told him. He went to the Kareth Ravine, east of the Jordan, and stayed there. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. And it seems simple. It doesn't seem like that big of a, how could you get uh, much out of this? Uh, it's just, First, though, we see is God's directing his path right from the beginning. Uh, so he, uh, it says, 
you will drink from the brook and I have directed ravens uh, to supply you. So you will drink from this brook. He's directing his steps. So our pathway of life, of where we are, God directs that. And he directs us to where he will supply us. He doesn't direct us into a place where he won't supply us. He directs us to the place where his blessings are. And I, I find that, I find that just that he's leading us to be encouraging. Um, and we see that he supplies our needs and not always our wants. Um, uh, now we live in, in, in the West, we kind of live, we have what we need and we have what we want to sometimes. Uh, um, but, uh, you know, lately I've been evaluating as you guys have been probably evaluating wants versus needs and things like that during the situation that we're in. So I thought that was something to think about. He didn't, uh, uh, serve him a gourmet meal uh, from the ravens. It was simple bread and meat and water from the brook. Um, and it wasn't anything fancy. And, and following God doesn't mean that he's going to provide the perfect life now. Uh, it doesn't mean that he's going to provide uh, a bed of roses for us always. And it's going to be simple. It's going to be hard. And we know the life that the Apostle Paul lived and on the list of things that he went through. And that's what we should uh, come to understand that it's not all about our blessings now. It's about our relationship with God now. And we have an inheritance to come later. Um, so uh, I want to read a quote from A.W. Arthur W. Pink. Uh, He's got a great insight on this, on Elijah. His, one of his commentaries reads, it says, Instead of a river, God often gives us a brook, which may be running today and dried up tomorrow. Why? To teach us to rest, in our, to teach us not to rest in our blessings, but rather the blesser himself. And I think that's why he, he uh, why God decided to give him a meager food and water, uh, something that he would, you know, a brook can dry up in a day. Uh, so, and there was a drought that he just pronounced. So um, we would see if we continued our study that the brook does dry up, uh, dry up. But for the day he was provided for, and um, he was provided for in a way that we could see past the water and see past the food and see God's hand actually providing. And that's what's exciting is when we get to see God's hand in providing for us. Uh, when we see uh, God's hand, that's when I get most excited. Uh, it's not necessarily when I get the big thing that I prayed for uh, that gets me excited. Maybe I'll get a small rush of adrenaline or something, but it's when I can sit back and say, hey, remember that it's a very specific prayer I asked you to pray? Well, that came true. And I don't know why I'm shocked, but it I I prayed and God granted it. And it's amazing to know that God hears me, responds, loves, and and gives according to his will. And it just made me so happy that if I pray what God wills, he'll give it to me. And uh, uh, I had a scenario like that this week where this started and uh, it was nothing big nothing major just something small and but the way God answered it and he made it clear that it was all him and uh, that joy has kept me going this whole week uh, and, and uh, I'm excited about that and I, I so God can use little things to make big impacts um, so I think uh, I've been counting uh, these little things in providence that come along and these little things uh, instead of just chalking them up to chance which we don't have a God that lives by chance or does things by chance uh, but a God that orders and commands things and is a God of uh, order and um, doesn't let things just go as they as they please so um, 
I see that all these pr little providences in, God, in my life, these things that I would say are just happen, they're not. These are times to worship God. These are times that we can say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for providing this or providing that. And uh, we don't have to wait just for like a giant miracle to, to praise God, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, we know that uh, God could have made a well. That's the first thing I thought of. Why didn't he give him a well? Lead him to a well. Or why didn't he make a spring come up out of the water? Or why didn't he make um, a river instead of a creek? And, you know, it's just like what we talked about before. It's because he wanted Elijah to grow and trust in him to provide daily, to provide for his needs uh, and uh, to have to trust in that every day and wake up and see if the brook's still running. You know, depend on the ravens to deliver food. And that leads me to another thing. Of all the animal animals or whatever, we would have thought maybe angels would provide. They're ministering spirits. Why wouldn't an angel provide food uh, for Elijah? Why a raven of all things? And I think, again, that's to show that God can use anything uh, for his purpose. And his, his purpose for us uh, is not to provide us with all that we want in the way we want it and things like that. The purpose for us as we are in Christ, um, Pastor Ray talked about it today, that you know, being in Christ is a big, is, is a big deal. That's our identity. And being in Christ means that God works all things for the good of those who love him, who have been called. And the, the good that he's called us to is to be conformed to the image of his son. So God evidently knew that Elijah would benefit more from a raven bringing him food than an angel. God knew that a brook would satisfy and grow Elijah more than a river or a spring or a well or something like that. God knew that. Uh, uh, Matthew Henry, one of my favorite commentators, wrote, the ravens were appointed to bring him meat, and they did so. Uh, we are to learn to live upon providence, to trust it for our bread, uh, and the bread of the day. God could have used angels to minister to him, but he chose to he chose uh, but he chose to show that he can serve his own purposes by the meanest creatures. I don't know if they're the meanest creatures, but by the meanest creatures as effectively as by the mightiest. So he's saying God can use it, you know, even a raven uh, can get his job done. He doesn't need uh, anything else. Um, and again, we see that this is working not just for his body physically, his needs, but spiritually, this is helping Elijah uh, trust in the Lord to provide. Because, you know, and then if we continued our study in the next chapter, uh, I believe, I believe if I check my notes, it would say that he would, uh, this is when he meets the prophets of Baal and they have a, a contest. So that's another lesson. But uh, the point is, he didn't want Elijah to fall in love with the gifts. He wanted Elijah to fall in love with him. And he wanted Elijah to see him in the simple things of life. And we're living in a time where it's hard to see a lot of good. And it's hard to see a lot of grand things that just dazzle us and we're so excited about. Because it's been kind of uh, hard to say the least hard couple of weeks for me at least. And um, so I've learned to not chalk up everyday things to just chance, but savor them and thank God for them. And know that they really are from God. God moves providence and naturally moves things around uh, uh, for our good to conform us to the image of his son. Uh, and also to take care of our bodies and our needs. So he does both of those things. And um, that has brought me great peace. 
uh, a joy and a satisfaction uh, that uh, even the smallest things can happen and really brighten my week. And um, it's not the giant things I have to look for or have. Uh, and far too many times uh, we've been focusing on prayer, Pastor Ray brought out. Uh, so many times my lack of prayer keeps my eyes closed to the miracles that God's doing, whether it's through providence or through real miracles that are uh, not natural. Um, but without praying, uh, when I do pray, my eyes are open to see God working. If I don't pray, I miss out not on God's working all the time, but on noticing it. Uh, and that's the joy is not just getting what you want. It's the noticing God is giving it to you. And, um, uh, that, I don't know if that makes sense. I wish I could talk to you and you could talk back and we're going to try to set up something that I know Christopher's working on that soon. So we'll try to get that, uh, uh, accomplished and fixed, but, um, uh, it's God working and God having a relationship with you that's so intimate that he moves even rain and, and uh, he moves the wind and he moves all these things. He's in control of them. He's orchestrated things divinely. And when you start to see that, when I start to see that, uh, my prayer life goes up, my joy and satisfaction in the mundane goes up. Uh, the hours that I have of free time stuck in my home because I, I can't, it's not safe to go out right now, uh, go by much faster and are full of much more praise and uh, meditation and considering of how great God is. So I, when, I didn't look at the clock when I started and I should have. So I know this has gone too long and I have to stop. But I want you to think about today uh, how is God serving you your needs, your bread, your water? Uh, is it through a brook? Uh, is it through a raven? Um, you know, if it's through a raven, definitely give me a call. I'm curious. But if it's, uh, you know, how is he serving you? Uh, is he serving you uh, all that you want and and everything like that, and that would be, that's not bad, that would be great, um, or is, he, is this a season where he's giving you just what you need for the day, and um, asking you to trust in him for tomorrow, um, I feel that's where most of us are, and I feel that's a safe place to be, because our God is a safe God, uh, a God that we can trust with his history, his, his record, uh, that we have preserved for us. Um, and so I think just counting God's activity in our lives when he seems to be absent has really kept me going these last couple of weeks, uh, especially this past week. So I want to end with Psalm 73, 25 states that, uh, whom have I in heaven but you, and earth has nothing I desire but uh, besides you. And I find that, that quote, uh, whom, whom have I in heaven but you, and earth has nothing I desire, I desire besides you, is the kind of attitude that I need, need to have. Um, yes, I love my family, I love my kids and wife, uh, my friends, and, and things like that. But at the end of the day, when I'm laying down for sleep and when I wake up again, who's first on my mind? Uh, who's, uh, where's my identity? Um, where's my hope? Uh, uh, there's a lot of people whose hope is on uh, man right now. Uh, ventilators, um, solution to physical problems, and it's a scary place to be if you live in it. If you watch the news too long, it scares me. If I watch the news too long, it scares me. So uh, I have to be mindful that God's in control. And God's going to take care of me through a brook, maybe through a raven. 
uh, but he's going to take care of me. He's got a plan, and he promises that plan. Remember of Romans 8, 28, 29. There's a reason why, and it's to conform you to his son. And there's no greater joy I can imagine than being conformed to the image of his son. So uh, let's pray, and uh, I'll, I'll let you go. Uh, Father, I thank you that we are able to uh, look at a portion of scripture, just a snapshot from Elijah's life, and more importantly, um, get to see how you work in little things and supernatural things. Um, but you're working and you're not gone. You're here with us. Uh, uh, give us a thankful heart that can enjoy these little things because these, even the littlest things come from you. Uh, everything good comes from above, it says, uh, from the Father of lights. So we know that uh, we have a lot to be thankful for and a lot to be praising you for. And um, not only does that glorify you, but that will bring us a joy that uh, this virus can't take away. And um, I pray for everybody in our class, the legacy class, um, that you be with them and care for them and that they would uh, also have opportunities to witness and share the hope that they have. Because what a time to share the hope that you have. Um, and uh, I, I know our class is solid and trusts in you and I pray that you do wonderful things through them. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.